Yo, yo, and yo, as you can see, I'm sporting my Persecution Mania t-shirt by Sojum. And this is going to be a big CD update. It's, um, I'm not sure how many CDs I have to update on this one, but I promise you it's not going to be as long. Well, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this promise because I don't know how long the video is going to be. So I apologize in advance if, uh, the video overstays its welcome. So, um, without further ado, let's start off with a bang with Legion. The second album by Deicide. R released in 1992. And now this is, uh, I think, uh, three of four of the 90s albums I have by Deicide. The last one I really need to get now is is uh once upon the cross and then i'm good on 90s d aside i don't know if i'll get any of the 20th century ones i might but for now let's just uh cherish the fact that i'm uh that i'll be good on the 20th century d aside and as you can see i'm start looking at the pre-race uh uh highlights for uh <laughs> The uh, 2021 Charlotte Roval race. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to feel nostalgic uh, when looking back on this one. Depending how many years will go by and depending what year in the future they're watching this. Next is a Holy Grail death metal album, Dawn Possession by Immolation. Man, do I uh, feel young again by looking at this because this album was like my shit in high school. And now I have it on hard disk. The only reason I just didn't buy it, buy it back then is because, well, it was absurdly expensive and I was still uh, getting in the minimum wage uh, payment. <laughs> and, uh, well, now I finally have it on hard disk and no need to digitally buy it. <laughs> this is the drumming pattern on that song in the... Low down to the guitars and the deep growls. It's like the most evil album, satanic album you could ever possibly get. Probably my favorite uh, satanic death metal album of all time, if I do say so myself. Next is a very, very, very underrated prog metal band. Progressive death metal band, sorry. Thresholds by Nocturnus. Not to get confused with Threshold by Hammerfall. I believe this was uh, released in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. This is a pretty damn cool cover showing like a uh, science fiction or science uh, fantasy looking uh, Album cover like you would expect from either Star Trek, uh, Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, and so on. Never, never seen any uh, death metal albums quite like this one. Finally, for once, they're not going over the top gory or over the top uh, satanic. And now, finally, you get a very progressive album cover. Earache Records. No less. <laughs> Next is another uh, Holy Grail album because of the ever so beloved Rob Barrett from Cannibal Corpse, Retribution by Malevolent Creation. Oh, fun fact, uh, I first discovered the Eve of the Apocalypse uh, you, uh, song through some uh, hate monger on Avenged Sevenfold saying that he now actually likes... Uh, Avenged Sevenfold, but unfortunately that video is deleted along with his older channel by uh, Hunky Third MD. And uh, the quiet part in the beginning, he was explaining why he now likes Avenged Sevenfold. And as soon as they got to the hard thrashy stuff, he said Avenged Sevenfold fucking sucks and April Fools bitches and all that shit. <laughs> unfortunately, he didn't. He wasn't able to save that video when it got terminated back in 2011. But his Channel now is Hunky the Bear. You can subscribe to him if you want. He doesn't really do much of the trolling videos anymore. But, um, you can still check out his, uh, channel. I mean, I'm sure he probably cringes at his, uh, older videos, but, uh, that doesn't mean he, uh, 
rescinds his uh, dislike of Avenged Sevenfold, which is okay. I mean, I agree with him, but he's only to like and dislike what he wants. And uh, I also discovered their song, uh, Slaughter of Innocence, off a uh, another troll video of his. But unfortunately, that troll video of his was not saved either. So, it's very unfortunate. But nevertheless, this is a damn good death metal album from 1992. And I will never not love it. Next is an album, thanks to my... Good buddy Alex Hoover, shout out to Blaze Like 334, by the way, for uh, contributing most of this uh, CD haul. Lamb of God, Storm and Drains. <laughs> Wait, Storm and uh, Drains, yeah, I think. Uh, signed to Epic Records, and it's a kick ass album from 2015. I'm pretty sure I've heard more than half of uh, <laughs> Lamb of God's songs by now, considering I've seen them three times as an opening act. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is a damn good album. Cannot wait to update it onto my iTunes library. Next is Shallow Bay, Best of Breaking Benjamin. Another uh, band I uh, wish I uh, got to see back in 2020, and I will hopefully one day get my uh, retribution or... Uh, or, um, uh, how do you put this without sounding like an idiot? Um comeback by finally seeing these guys uh, as a sort of a uh, comeback from the losses we've had in 2020. Yeah, 2020. Hmm. Next is Monuments and Melodies by Incubus. Very underrated uh, late to late to and early 2000s uh, rock band. I mean, I would definitely encourage anyone to listen to this if they can. Hmm. Next is a very underrated uh, Bay thrash band, Breaking the Silence by Heathen. And I'm 1989, and here are the band members on the back. Damn hard banger uh, album. Absolutely, you should get this if you want to search for any... Uh, underrated uh san francisco thrash metal bands if you're looking to expand upon your obscurity and thrash metal get this album now next is probably one of my favorite albums of all time in the technical death metal uh subgenre this is uh our good buddy uh levi mcintyre known as thrash maniac 99's favorite album by nile in their darkened shrines uh, everything about this is just like perfect everything from the blessed dead up to ruins it, it's just all complete and utterly flawless a damn awesome album for their time in 2002 the 2000s were definitely a wild time to be alive during the uh, death metal scene <laughs> It sounds like a Nile would be a 90s band, but they really, really knocked it out of the park in the 2000s. Oops, CD fell out. It's a little loose there. Next is a Nile album from 2009, Those Whom the Gods Detest. I first heard these guys through my cousin Odin, and uh, I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to get into them yet because I didn't want him to feel like he, I was copying his music taste. But uh, once I ch checked out uh, the song uh, Annihilation of the Wicked, I was like, holy fucking shit, these guys are awesome. And I was just hooked ever since then but with uh, Nile. Next is another underrated thrash metal band that I got thanks to uh, the gift cards I got from my co-workers. Coroner, rest in peace, from 1987 to, to Century Media, Columbia. Another damn flawless thrash metal album that anybody looking for obscure and rare uh, thrash metal gems should absolutely get and add to their collection if they haven't already. I got this one off uh, Amazon, by the way. 
Next is another Teenage Hood album that was released on the year I was born. Horacle by In Flames. Oh, there's a funny story. I heard, first heard that uh, through this album because of uh, how there was a big cry wolf about how... Uh, how... Uh, Atreyu's song, uh, Right Side of the Bed, was a rip-off of the song, uh, The Hive, which is the fifth track on this, uh, Horacle album, and I thought, wow, the intro riffs do sound exactly the same. But I wouldn't say that's a rip-off, just more of a, uh, well, it kind of is a copy and but the rest of the song, the rest of the songs don't really sound alike. Hmm. Besides, they both, uh, those riffs are, nevertheless, good ways to kick off a banger song. I mean, at least Atreyu uh, was uh, ripping off a good uh, and obscure uh, melodic death metal band. Next, we've got "Eat the Heat" by Accept, which is the last, which is the first album not featuring uh, Udo or. Which he would uh, go on to uh, form his band uh, Udo itself and uh, Dirk Schneider I think would go on uh, later in the 2000s for Accept to revamp the whole uh, Accept uh, catalog Next is a 2021 gem, and that would be Tornateries by Carcass. Another uh, untouchable masterpiece. I'm willing to tell you it will be a classic gem with the years to come. Might not be as untouchable as uh, Surgical Steel and uh, Heartwork, but it will definitely be a banger to future generations who are getting slowly getting into metal <laughs> and would probably feel nostalgic about the 2020s and would probably wish they were they were adults in this decade that's currently unfolding because I can guarantee you we're in for a big a lot of big treats this decade next is Ghost Riveries by Opeth. I'm slowly trying to proliferate my uh, Opeth uh, catalog. And uh, Opeth from 2001, Black Water Park. And Opeth Watershed. And uh, Opeth's um, Pale Communication. Opeth, uh, Damnation. It's a lot of Opeth al albums I have in there. <laughs> because uh, I'm only three albums away from completing their catalog because I really want to catch up on the this fucking awesome progressive metal band. Arguably one of the most unique progressive metal bands of all time that tends to go into clean riffs, clean vocals, uh, harsh vocals, banger, uh, Songs to uh, s soothing songs that are good for late night drives. Everything. I could go on forever talking about them. Next is another uh, death metal classic from Earache Records. War Master by Bolt Thrower. I have no idea why these guys were uh, so low on, on my on my radar when I was uh, collecting CD albums, but hey, it's better late than never. Luckily, I now finally got a legendary death metal band on my, in my uh, CD catalog. I feel less uncultured now. I feel like I'm slacking a little less now that I have this beautiful masterpiece known as War Master into my collection. Next is another uh, underrated uh, gem from the 2000s. This time, this is a power metal band. Well, this is pretty much an entry power metal band with uh, the last album featuring ZP Theater. All of you already know what this band is now that I mentioned the name. Ultra Beatdown by Dragon Force. Now, I officially have all the uh, albums by Dragon Force in the ZP Theater era. 
there's only really three more uh, Dragon Force albums to complete, and then it's a full-on catalog complete. Oh, look at that. There's a C-130 cargo plane flying over Charlotte. <laughs> Everyone will immediately recognize the first track if they have ever played the Guitar Hero DLC, Heroes of Our Time. Next is another uh, death metal gem, a, a Holy Grail death metal album from uh, 1989. And uh, pretty much, uh, if you haven't already, if you really claim to be a big thrash metal fan, well, thrash metal fan, death metal fan, and claim to have it as your number one go-to genre, then you're going to have to get this album, or otherwise I think you're bluffing. But now it is Altars of Madness by Morbid Angel, another uh, Teenage Hood album. Everything from mortal rights to suffocation, blasphemy, evil spells, damnation, bleed for the devil, everything. An untouchable, beautiful, holy grail death metal album. What more can I really say? They're just fucking badass. Another Floridian death metal band signed at Earache Ref Records. <laughs> Next... Oh, this is another big batch. Keep in mind, I've had some of these CDs for a while. I just made the mistake of not updating them soon enough. Thanks to Hoover for finding them and telling me that I forgot to update these specific CDs. Well, I'm getting around doing it now. Metallica's SN, SNM number two. This time, uh, covering the songs that, uh, that were new in the 20th century, such as Moth in the Flame, uh, Halo on Fire, Day That Never Comes, uh, what else, uh, what else have we got here, The Gun Forgiven 3, oh. I don't think they covered every song on this album, but it's definitely going to be fun to listen to. Next, we've got Stained Dysfunction. Another awesome Trivium album, The Sin and the Sentence, which I uh, saw Trivium recently, and uh, they recently got a new album, and I uh, hopefully when I go to Newberry Comics, they'll have that album uh, on sale, which by the way, I bought Torn Atiris from Newberry Comics just a few minutes ago, so uh, if they have uh, Torn Atiris, then I would hope that they have uh, Trivium's new album, because... Newberry Comics, you're dead to me if you don't. Next is Dark Roots of Earth by Testament from 2012. Holy shit, I'm scared that 2012 was nine years ago now. God damn it, don't call it a classic yet, please. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not ready for that. No, please, no. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's another uh, Teenage Hood album since, uh, well... Most of the Testament's uh, 20th century stuff was childhood and stuff, and now uh, I'm calling this my teenagehood album, or a teenagehood album. Next, we've got Parabellum by Cedar, a 2020 gem. And another uh, 90s classic is Rage Against the Machine. I think I now officially have all of Rage Against the Machine. I'm not positive. I unfortunately lost track of it. But nevertheless, I'm glad to have it in my collection, finally. Next is Unearth Extinctions. One of the best uh, metalcore bands of all time coming from the Boston scene. Well, of course, I'm always going to be biased like that. What more can you really expect? <laughs> Unearth of really knows how to make banger shit because uh, anybody that says that metalcore sucks has obviously never even remotely touched the badass kind and Unearth is absolutely fucking awesome and obviously people don't know how to distinct the difference between metalcore and whatever garbage it is that they're listening to because well I can assure you that it's two 
shit to be even be considered metaphor. Hmm. Next is a 2021 album, Aggression Continuum by Fear Factory. I actually don't remember getting this particular album, but I'm willing to bet uh, Hoover bought this album for me, or maybe I heard it from Thrash Maniac 99 and bought it off uh, eBay, and or um, maybe I just heard it off of iTunes and decided to get the album myself, but it's called Light of Torch, You Will Be the Death of Me, it's signed to Nuclear Blast Records, which is pretty much... Nuclear Blast Records at this point is pretty much everyone's go-to company to sign to at this point, since a lot of our classic bands t seem to go from Roadrunner, Earache, and so on to uh, Nuclear Blast Records. And, uh, last but certainly not least at all, one second. Human Condition by Blackstone Cherry. Oh, so it wasn't anything broken. So, hey, it comes with picks. <laughs> I love that. This is definitely something that I uh, should share to my collection, and certainly should uh, use to pick my guitars with. Great, awesome 2020 album. Always, oh, I always like to look back on uh, the Diamonds on the Rough for uh, 2020 on cool stuff like this. To remind myself, not everything you despise about a certain year, a certain timeline was all shit. And you can always uh, look at the silver linings like uh, Blackstone Cherry on shitty years like 2000. Uh, 20 diamonds on the rough silver linings whatever you want to call them so that's it i have for the cd update oh, oh wait no 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 i'm not done no not at all nope Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> if you're tired and you were probably so stoked to finally get done with this particular video, I do apologize in advance. Sorry that I uh, made you about to click off the video, but then now s stayed for much longer. But it is what it is. Next is a legendary black metal album, Eternal Hails by Dark Throne. Another kick-ass uh, 2021 album. Ne another uh, damn good uh, damn good uh, album is Below by Beartooth and another good 2020 album by uh, Born of Osiris a progressive metalcore band which is not something you, you often hear about unless if you're talking about bands like Pro Protest the Hero but Here's another uh, rare gem, Born of Cyrus. And you've got another classic uh, Overkill album signed to Internal International. The Killing Kind. I'm getting there on completing the Overkill account while you're, it's a, just a big hassle, but I really need to complete the uh, Opeth uh, discography and the um, Sodom discography at a later point because I want to complete the albums of bands I want to see live of bands that I haven't seen uh, live yet so that means I have to get going on Opeth Mastodon um yeah no I already completed Dream Theater's catalog not counting the album they have upcoming in October 22nd um I didn't complete Exodus yet and that's, that, that, I'm not just talking about their upcoming album, Persona Non Grata, in November. I don't think I completed uh, Death Angel yet, either. I still did not complete Judas Priest, because I still have Sad Wings of Destiny to get in a few other albums I'm not remembering. And uh, thanks to uh, Alex Hoover, I now have 
Highway to Hell on real CD as supposed to burnt copies. Next is Diamond Eyes by Deftones. And next is uh, Times of Grace, Songs of Loss, and Sarpent, which is going to be a damn cool and awesome uh, 2021 gem to listen to because holy shit do I have a lot of great and fucking awesome 2021 albums to listen to because <laughs> I'm just going to have a big, big voyage and journey listen to every single album I got this year because Hoover, you really are a legend at really, really relentlessly going above and beyond the call of duty of trying to get me all these albums. You didn't have to do this, but you did it anyway. <laughs> it is what it is. Next is Nimrod by Green Day. And Let the Bad Times Roll by Offspring. So much 2021 masterpieces. And Ohms by Deftones. That almost rhymes. <laughs> And next we've got uh, Blood and Stone by Seven Dust. Arguably, I think I... Uh, no, I was thinking of Silverstein because I was about to say that's one of uh, Manor and Shades' favorite albums. Well, not albums, but uh, bands. But I was uh, thinking of uh, Silverstein instead. <laughs> next we have got Beyond Hell, he Hell and Heaven by... Uh, Voltbait, the band I saw live perform before uh, Metallica went on stage back in 2017. God damn, what a year that was. It was a year to be alive, that's for sure. <laughs> Next, we've got a kick-ass uh, album by a Bostonian hard rock metal band from the 2000s. Holy shit, I can't believe people are actually being nostalgic about the 2000s. <laughs> I first, I don't remember when I discovered this uh, particular album, but I do know I discovered uh, hearing their songs through uh, NASCAR montage videos. And it, specifically their song, uh, I don't remember. Hell yeah, yeah. That was that song. Light It Up by Red Fury. And Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie by Voltbeat. And last but not least, I saved one of the best for last, which is a 2021 album. It's, uh, by the way, uh, At the Gates. At the Gates, The Nightmare of Being. Sorry. Hey, right there. Thank you, Hoover, for at least helping me stay on top of all the uh, good, all good and fucking awesome 2021 albums. So that's it for my CD pickup update video. I still have a lot of CDs coming, but I just figured that I would uh, make this particular video now so I wouldn't have to make one like the one I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of CDs to update to the point where it got dreary and drawn out so much it became a pain in the ass to upload the video due to the how slow the progress was due to my very high video quality so i had to split it in parts so hope you guys enjoyed this one i'll see you later for whatever cd cds i have to show in this particular video and uh, i'll save my reveal for the next episode see y'all later